Armin Animation is a real underdog of an animation studio. Not only were they not really good enough for DreamWorks, but they're stop motion and they're British. Tags that kind of make them not the ultimate mainstream producer. But despite that, they do have some massive accolades in their history since the original Chicken Run is the most financially successful box office hit in the stop motion genre. So it probably comes as no surprise that they were going to make a sequel with Chicken Run 2, Dawn of the Nuggets. But this new installment did take 23 years to produce. And with a studio that puts in as much care and detail into every frame because that is what the genre of this animation needs to do, you can bet that they were putting in all the stops to make sure that this sequel doesn't fall into any pit holes, you know? We're in an era of sequels and reboots where everything's just kind of done for the greedy sake of it. And though there's also clearly the financial incentive that makes this seem like a greedy project, there are a lot of things that they try to do right to make it a little bit more soulful and still a great Aardman classic. But I came into this movie skeptical. From what I was seeing in the trailers, it just kind of looked like more of the same. It was nice that the animation quality is slightly better. It's just brighter lighting, really. And then other tiny things that I can't even perceive. But it seemed unnecessary. After the perfect, open-ended, happy ending of they get to live their paradisical, heavenly dreams from now on as the finale to their story, I figured that was it. Don't touch it, don't bother it anymore. And then there were other dramas that people added to the conversation, like the fact that they've swapped out different voice actors for the times. And honestly, I don't really think it makes a big difference. Some characters sound slightly different sometimes, it's fine. But yes, finally this morning I was able to see it. After years and years of waiting and months and months of it being announced, finally Chicken Run 2 is here. And it was better than I thought. I guess because I'm so used to just classic, super greedy, forced sequel bait, I was expecting this to be the same, but no, it's it's decent Aardman quality. There are all sorts of jokes in the early moments that I find really funny. I love pretty much every visual gag this movie has to offer. I'm just a visual gags kind of guy. Now, the spanner in the works in this story is the fact that now there is a child intermixed in. And what's really nice right up front and center is the thematics behind this story. With Ginger obviously being all about freedom and wanting to get out of her cage, now her daughter is exactly like her. And even more thematic is she's so into wanting to be free that she wants to escape paradise. To the point that her overprotective parents and village end up caging the child to keep her safe. It's a brilliant flip on the usual format between the freedom of trying to escape a hellhole and then being overprotective over the next generation. That is a brilliant theme and then the rest of the movie happens. See, eventually the child does escape. She grows up, she's like a teenager now. She goes out and discovers a whole new chicken farm. This time the chickens don't even know that they're gonna be tortured in some sort of ways. They, they voluntarily go to a van that picks them up and they're like, hey, it, it's sausage party. They, they made sausage party. Suddenly Molly the child ends up getting taken into the chicken farm. What a surprise. And it's no longer being an escape movie to get out of a farm but a heist movie to get in and out of the farm. All right, sure, there's a lot of heist movies, so uh, there could easily be some cliches going along here. And naturally, in Chicken Run fashion, it's a big ensemble group. It's not just Gingy that shows up, it's also Rocket, three of the friends, and also the two rats. But to be fair, a lot of these are fan favorite characters, fun to see. So, you know, there are beats, they do a whole thing about getting in, you see all these different over-complex militant blockades that this factory farm has, sure, sure, sure. But though Ardman does know how to have fun with some of its concepts and some of its visuals, the dialogue, man, the, the actual worded jokes were easily some of the most forced stuff I've ever seen. Clearly Aardman was aware that Babs was the fan favorite character. Many of her lines became full on mainstream memes. You know the one. I don't want to be a pie. I don't like gravy. So they brought that back and it's like, I don't want to charge into the fray. I'm fray phobic. Like that. That is the worst joke I could have possibly imagined. All you needed to do was copy the exact same formula, not invent a word like phrayphobic, and then just chuck either on the end of it to acknowledge you've said it before, you know? But no, practically all of Bab's lines are callbacks in some form to everything she said in the original. She's constantly talking about going on holiday. She's constantly saying that went well. It's, it's like she's become a parody of herself and it really, really doesn't work. 
There's some clearly nice story beats going on with the entire plot being this nice, you know, expansive world that they're trying to, you know, they, they do some choreography, sure. And the thematics of freedom and generational trauma and PTSD, brilliant. But it's so clearly a little bit too forcibly fan y Sometimes you can do it well, I do not think this was it. Scenes that included the rats were always a lot of fun. I got a very strong flushed away vibe from them, even with the casting rearranged. There's a point where the two of them are falling down and I'm literally thinking, thinking, keep your legs straight when you hit the water. Or similarly, the umbrella then takes them upwards again, like the end of Flushed Away. There's even a snail in the Flushed Away's design that's there, but he, he's just listening to the old man talk. Yeah, I guess that's a joke, but he, he, it doesn't even emphasize that he's trying to run away and can't. Like, it, it happens, but he's not like emoting, being like, like the slug from Monsters University, I guess. I don't know what I'm asking for here. Still, the rats were fun. That's all good. And I really liked that because there was this big ensemble cast, they split up and tackled different things at the same time. You had Molly right in the center of this playground where chickens are hypnotized and going through the perfect playtime area to make them seem like they're constantly happy. And then they completely obliviously just jump into the grinder. Apparently it makes them taste better. You've got Rocket up with the rats handling the vent system and mazing around everywhere. The other hens discover the giant camera system to see different parts of the facility, that, that's, it's nice. And though I guess I'm happy on paper that they each found different parts of the facility, they kind of just exist there for about 30 seconds and then they all meet up in the middle again and it, it, just, it goes a bit too fast. I, I kind of wish each of them tackled their own individual problems and then came back for a finale. It, it didn't really happen that way, but I mean, this fight, it, it's like, yeah. But hey, I can't exactly criticize a plot for not going the way I would write it. That's that's bad reviewing. Still, something about the middle did feel a little bit off, you know? Molly is saved almost immediately, and there is an extra element of Molly wants to go back in to save her new friend Frizzle, but also I feel like it happens just way too early. Gingy almost immediately finishes her arc being like, I shouldn't have been such an overbearing parent. Molly, I'll let you be free. Yahaha! And so to make her arc go a little further, she then ends up getting hypnotized, for about a minute, and then she's immediately saved again. I think it would have been nice even if that was extended, so that Jinji, the usual leader, is completely clueless for the rest of the mission, and the others have to get on without their leader, guiding themselves, you know? But no, it, it all kind of just sped ran all the beats in a way that made it feel flat more than anything. Welcome to the halfway mark. Thank you for getting this far into the video. Come subscribe if you haven't already or come join us over on our Discord server if you want to discuss movies with other people or give suggestions directly to me. More new movie reviews to come when there are new movies to review. The video's not over yet. Here's the other half of it. There was a lot of formula to this movie that it kept reinterpreting from the original and it clearly shows. There's a moment where, just like in the original, a chicken is killed. But instead of it being a slow, drooling moment, you see the legs dangling and then it chops off in the shadow silhouette. Instead, it's a big happy hypnosis thing when they jump into the grinder. But it, it doesn't feel the same. There's nowhere near that kind of dread, uh, I guess it's because it's got sugar-coated paint over the whole thing, but it's still, it just, something about it didn't work thematically. I was very surprised that they did full-on play the sounds of grinders behind the curtains and they actually turned them into chicken nuggets and you could see it, but I think there's something about how it's so much more personal in the original that it works way better than the super corporate, almost fantasy level of fast food production of these chickens. But speaking of formulaic, the most notable decision, whether it's good or bad, comes in the form that yes, they brought back Mrs. Tweedy. Now I like actually that she has since divorced and married someone else with the exact same body type and idiotacy in comparison to her. She, she apparently has a type. I like her new design, extra evil, extra sci-fi this time. But I think the thing I really do dislike, other than the fact that she exists, so it's clearly just doing the original again, but worse, is the fact that the trailers had to spoil it. The trailers really ruined a lot of elements of this, I, I genuinely feel. Because the reveal of her being back, I think was really, really good if you didn't know it. She has a long drooling staircase moment with her legs only shown, just like the first time you see her, legs only shown. But because you know it's her, it's, it's kind of like the first 40 minutes are wasted because you're waiting for her. And despite being all sci-fi fantasy this time, she still swings around an axe by the end of it. It's just like, ugh. There's an idea here that could have been really good and an execution that could have been brilliant, but it all in a way just feels kind of flat, especially when your history is one of the greatest stop motion animated movies of all time. 
it just falls flat in comparison, which is basically exactly what I feared this movie would be from the start. Better than I thought, I liked a good chunk of the jokes in a lot of different ways, and I liked the themings when I dig for them myself. But so many lines were forced, so many story beats were repeated from the original, and there were practically no real fresh ideas. There's laser ducks, and they explode. Yeah, that'll do it. You've got a fire starting magnifying moment, as if it's Toy Story 1 again. You got a eyeball camera thing, like it's Squid Game. You got the flushed away umbrella moments that I mentioned before. Or bashing through a little vent hole, like Toy Story 2. Or the giant human chicken man, like Toy Story 2. I could see so many other animated movies in this, and I'm not sure if they're meant to be references, or if it's meant to be cliches we've already seen before. I do like the husband element of Mrs. Tweedy some more. There is another man that gets introduced that's seemingly going to be the next husband. And they do open up the story to then, what do you know, freeing all the other chickens. But also, even then, that becomes an immediate success. Sort of. Once they're released, they just immediately barrage out and run away, and there's like, there's no character depth for any of them, but I guess it is a giant crowd. We've got enough an ensemble, that's fine. But then also, when trying to save them, ugh, the final action sequence takes place on the grinder conveyor. Of course it does, right? All the friend hens are stuck on the end, about to be pushed in. Mrs. Tweedy's in the backstage, up on an up-top walkway with her axe, swinging away at Gingy, and also Molly, and also Rocket. They have the remote to turn it off, and they just don't press it for the longest, longest of time. Molly goes over some wires and grabs it, but doesn't press it. Chucks it to Gingy, who grabs it, but hesitates to touch it. It's to the point there's even a shot of all the hens literally horizontal above the grinder, and... It was so delayed. It was so too much. It's, they even go on another tangent about Rocket swing over on the wire after that horizontal shot that it, it really took me out of it. It ruined the pacing of the action sequence. I get sometimes really editing it to make it seem, you know, as high strung dramatic as possible. I think this movie edited it badly. I think the pacing of that final moment was too far off the edge that I, I just, it's, it's off, it's ruined. I, I couldn't get over it. Mrs. Tweedy is then actually chucked into the physical grinder and somehow does not come out like a big old blob of meat, instead a battered one. She then also teleports to the getaway van at the end and is just swinging an ax through the roof, which, you know, not as good as a flying in the sky, you know? I have legitimately forgotten what happens to her on the van. I. Uh, that really says something if I've literally forgotten your super climax. But then they return back to paradise and they set up a whole new district whereby they're gonna go out there in the world and save all the chicken farms in the future. Also, suddenly, at the moment they started this heist, they have the power to create a floating cloud. How did they do that? Doesn't that kind of ruin the element of how hard it was to build a flying big old cuckoo nest thing in the past? I guess that was because they had limited resources and now they have technology somewhere? I don't know. It's a weird movie the further you look into it. It's nice that the characters came back. It's a fun little romp. There are some good Ardman jokes, but so much of it is so clearly just retreaded material that it just feels like it's gone a bit stale. This movie came out to be exactly what I feared. A bit better than I thought, but uh, this is not an Ardman greatest hits. It's a solid mid movie. And it's a shame because maybe there was room for a really good movie with different thematic tweaks and changes on the ensemble and just, I don't know, something a bit more creative. But the jokes were flat, the lines were naff, there were very few fresh ideas. In the end, it was just a little bit of a cash grab retreading the steps again. I'm glad I saw it, I'm glad it exists, and I would recommend it to other people. But the pacing was weird. The story was bleh, and even the choreography was alright, but it wasn't anything brilliant, you know? It is what it is, and now they can expand to maybe a TV series of showing off other farmlands, I don't know. I, at the very least, am uh, both mildly pleasantly surprised and overall disappointed. But I guess that's pretty fitting for this industry anyway at the minute. Turns out British people can have just the same problems as everybody else. These chickens just ended up a little undercooked. And on that note, I'll end it off here. My name's been Daz. You didn't really care. Let me know your thoughts on this movie. It's only just come out, but I'm curious to see your thoughts. Maybe I'm in the minority here. I am quite a grouchy, pessimistic guy these days, so who knows. Discuss it in the comments or over on our Discord server, if you'd like to discuss it with other people too. And I'll see you in a little bit.